So in this video, we're looking at how to access our Azure environment uh, using Cloud Connexa. As you can see, I'm on the admin UI. I'm going to expand networks and click networks and click on add network so I can um, add my Azure to Cloud Connexa. Normally, you have three uh, options or scenarios uh, to create a network, site-to-site, -site, remote access, and internet access. Uh, or secure internet access. If you click on the question mark next to each one of them, you're going to get a diagram with a brief explanation. You can choose one or multiple. For here, since we're talking about Azure, I'm going to choose remote access. Next step, we need to uh, give a name to our uh, network. So I'm going to call it RNO Net. And then for the connector, I'm just going to call it RNO connector as well. Then we're going to choose the region closest to our connector. Uh, in our scenario, it's going to be San Jose, and I'm going to click on Next. This is the steps that we're going to deploy uh, the network connector on our Azure environment. If you drop down the connector type, you're going to see options for operating system, multiple cloud providers. We're talking about Azure, so I'm going to choose Azure, and I'm presented with two options, either launch it on Azure portal or download the template manually. I'm going to click on Launch on Azure, and that's going to get me to the portal so I can deploy my VM. Uh, resource, resource group, I already have one, so I'm going to choose that. And then for the region, uh, let me fix this. Uh, for the region, it's already selected uh, and give a name to VM. I'm going to name it the same as my connector, so I'll just call it RNO connector, the one that I put on um, admin UI. Um, SSH public key for authentication. If you already have one, you can use existing one or you can generate a new one. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to choose a password. Let me go ahead and type it. Here we go. And then the DNS prefix, uh, you just want to create that. I'm just call it RNO connector. For the VM size, you want to make sure that you choose something that's appropriate for your network. I'm going to leave it as a default. Virtual network name, I'm going to choose that and the subnet. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to click on Next, that's going to get you to the overview page or review page. Basically, you're going to review, make sure all the information that you enter is correct. And then when you're happy with everything, go ahead, click on Create. And we are deploying the VM. As you can see, the deployment is in progress. This is going to take uh, a few minutes, so two or three minutes. So I'm going to fast forward through this part and come back when it's done. Okay, the deployment is done. As you can see, it shows a successful, and there is a message that says deployment is completed. Let's go back to our VMs. Uh, here we go. Let me search for it, and uh, here we go. And as you can see, our you know, connector is here, and the status is running. Let's head back to our admin UI. I'm going to click on Next here, and as you can see, the connector status is connected, so we're good to go. Click on Next to continue. This is where you're going to add applications. Uh, these are private or public applications that you want to have access or get access to users. I have a server on uh, Azure with the shared folder. So I'm going to type the information here. The domain is going to be shared.ovnlab.local. And then for uh, application type, uh, this is going to be a custom. We're going to use SMB ports. So let me type uh, TCP here. It's going to be 139 and 445. And then for the UDP, we're going to use 137 and 138. And then submit. So these are the protocols we're using. And then click on Add Application. If you have other applications, you can add them here again. But uh, we're good to go with one application for the purpose of this demo. Click on Next. And that's going to get us to IP routes and services. I don't have anything for this configuration, so I just leave it blank and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on Next. This is where you can configure your access group, either create a new one or use an existing one. For now, I'm just going to leave it as a default and uh, scroll down and click on Finish. I'm going to show you how to configure one later on. OK, our network is up online, connector is online, our application is shared, and we're good to go. One more thing that we need to do, we need to create a DNS record here. So for the shared.ovnlab.local. Expand settings, go to DNS, and then DNS records. Now I need to get the private IP address of uh, my server. 
if I go to my um, Azure um, pl uh, platform, you, here we go. You can see the private IP address of my server. So I copy that here. I'm going to come here and then create a DNS record. So the domain is, uh, oops, I completely missed that. Let me fix this. And then uh, paste the IP address and click on Add DNS Record. So the DNS record is created. Now the next step is creating an access policy. As if you remember, I said I'll show you uh, in a minute. So I'm going to expand access and then go to groups. Uh, so you can see I already have some groups here. If I want to create a new one, I just click on Add Access Groups. But I'm going to configure an existing one, accounting, is a good group to configure. Scroll down and I'm going to select the applications shared under the RNO network. Uh, so the user accounting, user group accounting has access to the shared folder on RNO network right now. So we're good. Now let's go ahead and test this. Let's go to users. And as you can see, Bruce is uh, a part of uh, or member of our accounting team. So let's go ahead and connect with Bruce's account. And we are connected. And now I'm going to connect to the shared.ovnlab.local. Let me bring my run box here. And here we go. So put the address and click OK. And we should be able to connect to our shared folder. And the server is on our Azure environment uh, with the connector. So as you can see, I'm connected to the server. This is my shared folder. If I double click, you can see the subfolders and other information. So this is how you uh, connect to your Azure environment uh, using Cloud Connexa when installing the connector on Azure. Thank you very much.